about pig feet around this floor here, and he said he didn't know much about pig feet. <laughs> but uh, since he's been over there in the big city of Hertford over there, they introduced him to a hog killing. He said he likes kittens, he likes good. So he, he's coming all around the Southern Way of Things. But uh, we'll have you this morning, Brother Mike, come bring us the words that you have for us. And we sure thank you to we ha have you with us this morning. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, I found, uh, since I was here, uh, I have I have become more southern. It's getting a part of me. I'm like I'm liking barbecue and everything. And since uh, brother had shared about it, is that uh, yeah, I had uh, actually two opportunities for somebody in our church. They invited me to two hog killings. Uh, now, I've really been that. coming up, and this is we don't. When I say that to people, my friends up in the northeast said. What did you go to hog killings for? I said I just wanted to see what it was. I've never, never been part of it, and so they just say, "Really, you're just you're getting too southern." I don't know what's going on, but more and more, the northeast is getting out of me. It's getting out of me. This is good. This is a good thing. But yeah, hey, listen, uh, I want to share with you. Thank you, uh, Pastor, Pastor and Bishop. Actually, Hans says he sends his greetings to you, and uh, also to Pastor Art. We hold uh, Pastor Art in high regard. His whole family and know that you do also and uh, i've been watching it different times i don't go on facebook that much and very but at various sides see all different things you're kind of doing to reach out in the community thank god good i'm glad reaching in the community is so important for to touch people's lives how many know that god wants to take a lot of people to heaven Amen. he wants a lot of people to know him as savior Amen. all of our neighbors and everything like that today i'd like to kind of go into an area that this is an area that it seems like it's I, I, I sense really the leading of God and the Holy Spirit. But I wonder, Lord, why do you have this message for me this morning? And as I've heard you all been sharing, I can see that I can see, understand why. I'm going to call it this. It's called Change the Channel. Yes. All right. So now you all have free books probably, right? right? Yeah. So can you put your hand out like this? Change the Channel. Say it with me. Change the channel. Today, we're going to focus on changing the channel. I'm not talking about the TV set, although I think that there are many times when the TV set needs to be changed in order to do that. Okay, we change ours, you know, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, we, we uh, stopped, you know, we stopped watching a lot of things uh, three or four years ago. And this is all junk. We don't want all this junk in our head. Because right. right. what you listen to goes in your head, it goes into your spirit. Right. And so in that, that we made a conscious decision. But today... I'm focusing on changing the channel in our lives and focusing towards how to do that, how, when to do it, when do we need to change the channel. I'm not talking again about the TV. I'm talking about what we're thinking about, what we're mesmerized by in our lives, how to change the channel. And it's going to go from Psalm 37. So if you have your Bibles with me or your apps or whatever, God, uh, we, we're uh, in Fountain of Life. Uh, we see all the apps come out, you know, they, oh yeah, they're going to look on the thing. I even use mine. Hey, I use mine and it's really good. I'm able to put a lot of notes in it. But Psalm 37 and first nine verses talk about this thing of being able to change the channel in our lives. So how many want to go with God? Just say amen. amen. I'm not talking dying. I'm talking about that. living for God, yeah. living for God. Jesus said, if you deny yourself, take up your cross daily and what? Here. Here Follow me. Follow okay. That is a daily changing that we have to go to become more like Christ. That we become the men and women, young people, children, that we become more like Christ in the way we think, we feel, uh, touching people's lives, going with God. See, the whole idea is that God wants us to join up with him. Join up with what he's wanting to do in our lives. So I'm 69 years old, and so I feel I love a lot by the 30, and then about uh, nine o'clock at night, I feel like I'm 105. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Like, but in the morning, I'm pretty, you know, I'm going that long, chopping, chopping along, and all the kind of stuff. But you know, about nine o'clock, some of you are too young to know what I'm talking about, but nevertheless, others, you understand what I'm talking about. Is that in here? is that in our lives that God wants us to join up with him. That means, uh, can I put it another way, uh, get with his program in our lives. 
In order to do that, we all know we have to change. Now, when you say this terrible word that we do not like to say, less even to practice, I can change. I can change. Come on, let me hear it really with gusto. I, I can change. Come on, convince me. I can change. Yes, you can change. Now, as we get older, as those of us who have more gray hair than others or is going on, change becomes more like, oh, I don't really want to change and everything. But if, we, if we're going to join up with God, we have to change. We have to change in our viewpoint. We have to grow in our understanding of who God is. We have to look around and say, hey, God, what do you want to do through my life? And there, that when I uh, retired, so, called, so to speak, last seven years ago, that's been seven years since we've been here. It was great. We love it. We never look back. One of the things that helped me get through it, retirement, I'm thinking, man, I just, you know, I've been in pastoral ministry for a long time. And I, that, that God had spoken to my heart one day. It was not audible, but I knew God sp spoke to me. He said, you are not retiring. You are retreading. And you know what retreading is, right? Tires, you know, all that kind of stuff and everything. That I and I got whoa! I said that sounds that sounds like it's from God. I'm not retiring. I'm retreading. It's going to look different, but I'm. You need to join up with me. And so this uh, this is talking about this idea of being able to change and go with God and what needs to do. But more importantly, in these nine verses, I think that we have very very practical things that God wants us to do in order to go with his program in our life. So let me just read it, if you don't mind. Psalm 37, if you have it, the first nine verses. Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. But then he goes on and he says what we're to do. Changing the channel. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous rewards shine like the dawn. Your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Don't fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. For those who are evil would be destroyed. But listen to this at the end. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Yes, amen. Verse 9. That's it is going on. Being who God wants us to be. And in it, I truly believe that we have to learn. And it's a learning process. It's been for me. So I think it's for everybody. Is that we learn how to join up with God. We learn how to trust him in a deeper way. I don't care how long you've known Jesus you can still go more in trusting him, in learning who he is. There's no place where you come to a ceiling saying, oh, well, that's as far as I can go. There's further and further and further. And my experience has been of being the Lord over 40 years. I look and say that what I know now and understand about God is like, wow, that's so much more than when I first got saved. That's how it's supposed to be. Until you breathe your last breath, you need to say, I want to be most like Jesus. I want to know more about him. I want a deeper relationship with him. Can anybody say amen? amen. We want relationship. Yeah. Relationship with him brings life to us in our lives. So let's look at this in the first part. It says fretting. I like to define things to make sure, you know, uh, what I'm talking about. Fretting means to eat or gnaw into, to corrode, to cause to suffer emotional strain or vex to be agitated, and to erode. So it's talking about, at the beginning, right at the beginning, it says, don't fret. I want to ask you a question, but nobody raise your hand. How much have you fretted this year? If the stuff that's going on with the election causes you to fret, turn it off. It's very easy. I heard a word from God. 
Turn it off. You know, anything you come in that is bothering you, it's getting to you, it's causing you to get unjointed with God, say, turn it off, it's not worth it. Because in heaven, there's not going to be any TVs, are there? No elections, and uh, by the way, no sickness, no disease, and all that kind of stuff. It's great, right? So here he's saying, don't fret because of evil doings. There's all kind of stuff going on in the world. In the world, Jesus said, you will have tribulation. But then the last part says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. So in that, that God wants us to cooperate with. He told us already ahead of time what we know already in our lives, that we are going to face challenges and tribulations and things that we didn't ask for, challenges to our faith. And God comes along and says, rather than getting all upset about evildoers and people doing all kinds of things they shouldn't do and all that, well, that's part of living in this world. But the good thing is that in it is that we recognize, hey, I don't want to go and get all upset about everything. If you have something like you're watching TV and it's getting to you, turn it off. Amen. Can I be your word today? Amen. Just turn the radio off. You find out that you're around, you know, you're in something. If uh, going into Walmart makes you agitated, like it me does, I, I like going to Walmart. Right? Not only like go, I go in there because I have to. My wife drags me in there. Know <laughs> <laughs> I me? Mean? But I look and say, no, don't go in there. Just uh, go in. Uh, that you say, okay, uh, if you like, I say, uh, I I've worked this out. I really worked this out. One thing that really worked me out, sister is that uh, I started saying, you know what? I'm going to go the speed limit. Yep. I, 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 now, I know that sounds really stupid, I, probably to a lot of people. I said, I did, and I realized, I said, I know I'm getting like, uh, like down here, everybody drives real slow as compared to the Northeast. Up there, it's like speed demon. Like, you know, and I knew that for years and years. I said, you know what? I need to slow down. I need to slow down. So I'm going to go to the speed limit. And you know what I found out? My spirit started changing. I started feeling so much better. I said, okay, I can get through this. It doesn't matter that the person in front of me is going 10 miles an hour and I want to go 50. That's right, I'm going to slow down. Anything. I know it sounds really simple, but you know what? The simple things often are the things that can get in our way in our lives. Amen. Gets in our way. Yes. It gets in our way. Conversations that can get in our way. So don't fret because of evildoers. Yeah. Don't fret. If things are happening, yes, people will keep on doing that. Envious of wrongdoers, no, you don't. Doesn't matter that your your neighbor has a Lexus or has a pool and you don't and all that kind of stuff. Forget it. Yeah, there will be no pools in heaven except if they're the pools of, of glass and whatever's going on. But you know, it won't be a matter when we die and go to be with Jesus that everything else that we thought was so important is not important. All right. I've been with many people on their deathbed. They do not talk over all these 40 years. Nobody has sat there and says about their 401k and their retirement benefits and how much money they have in the bank account and the size of their home. You know what they talked to me about? Two things. They said the quality of the relationships in their family, That's wrong. whether it was or not, and regrets about that. And secondly, what's going to happen when I breathe my last? And it can't be a coincidence because I, they're like, I don't know how many people, like the oodles of people. They never talk to me about that stuff. Or they're with their family. They're saying, I want to make it right with my wife or my daughter or my son. I wish they were here and they're not here. We have an estranged relationship. Focus on the things that are important in our lives. We're there. But we have to change the channel. So what do we do? Verse 3, it says it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Rather than fret and get envious and all tied up about stuff, I'm going to trust in the Lord and do good. Can you say that with me? Trust in the Lord and do good. That sounds nice even when you say it, doesn't it? Trust in the Lord. Now, it's in contrast to being fretting all over the place. So what do you do when you say, why well, I'm getting that? Like this past week, I it was a day I was just, I don't know, I was just going someplace, and I started getting anxious inside. I was getting anxious. I was thinking about this. I really forget what I was even really thinking about. And I was there. I said, God, I just I need help. And just like that, the Spirit of God spoke in my heart. Amen. Be at peace, Mike. Yeah. Be at peace. And I started weeping. And so it took away all the anxiety that I was feeling, that I was allowing. And I was allowing it. I was get, focusing toward, I don't forget really what it was. 
And thank God right there, I knew I heard from God, be at peace, Mike. And when he does that with me, he's like telling me, this is for you right now. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And that's words of Christ, of course, we know from that. See, changing the channel, you have to cooperate with God in order to change the channel. Maybe there's somebody that you're around and you're finding it hard to forgive them. And when you think about them and what they did that offended you, hurt you, wounded you, whatever it happened, it's time now to trust the Lord and do good. What does it do good? Forgive them. Holding on to it only hurts you. All right? Now, those of us that have gray hair, we know this. Right? I'm not saying anything. We don't know. We know this. We know we, all of us here that when you forgive, you release the person. Right? You release them. I'm not going to hold anything about they did this. That's true. They did that. Yes, they should not have done that. Yes, that's true. But you know that when we forgive, God will forgive us. Yes, Isn't that true? Isn't yes, that true? Yes, so you change the channel. You can keep on going on this channel. This is going to lead you to destruction. Or you can say, Lord, I'm going to do it your way. Like he says in Proverbs 3. How about this one? You know this. Trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He'll lead you in his good paths. He'll lead you into righteousness and holiness and peace in your life. Trust means a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone. In this case, it will be God. How many people believe that you can trust God with everything? Amen. Amen. Yes. When we come to the place in our lives, <clears throat> rather than say, well, I'm going to work this out, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, and we get ourselves all wired up and everything like that, and say, trust in the Lord and do good. That's right. Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Even when it hurts, you do the right thing. You go towards God. I'm going to trust God. If you want to have peace in your life, you have to trust God. I, well, I, I know they shouldn't have done that. They're doing this and everything. Your children, yes, I have a child. And sometimes I look and say, ah. Uh, why did you make that decision? Have you ever done that? Am I the only one? Come on now, fess up. It's fess up time right now in the body of Christ. You sure? It's, oh. I look and say, okay, God, just I'm going to trust you. And it's amazing how God works out things that have caused us to fret in our lives. When you learn to trust God, you say, you do it automatically. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust God. You are changing the channel rather than being caught into a vortex of fretting and envy and hurt and pain. The second one of there, you see there, changing the channels. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. It sounds like a blanket statement, and yes, it is. Why is it that God would say, and he says in other places about this, that, that, that being able to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because he's putting his desires in our hearts. While you're trying to work out things in the way you think that they should be worked out and getting all knotted up around it, God wants you to delight in him. That he has, how many would agree that God's way of doing things is much better than yours? Amen. Amen. I didn't hear everybody say amen, so I'm going to try again. Now, how many Amen. people believe that God's way of doing things is much better than yours? Amen. Right? Am I right? All right. Now, we often don't see it while we're going through it, right? Like, oh, no, I don't know about this. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Give the mouth a rest and let God trust in God. Yes. Learn to trust God. The yes. more you trust God, the more peace you will have in your life. Yes. And it's all based on this. This trusting of God is not just, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. No, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I am going to trust God. There's sometime when I was going through a very hard time several years ago, 20 years ago, something like that. Very hard time. I, I won't describe the whole thing. So I was like, uh, I was going, I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know, really like this. Literally, I would walk around the streets. My wife will tell you about two hours and 
I don't understand. Why are they doing this? What's going on? So I would just say every time I went out to walk out. And then what happened is, so I, uh, one day I just was so tired. I said, oh, God, I don't understand. This has not gone the way it's supposed to. And so I finally just stopped talking. And God spoke to my spirit, to my heart, right? God speaks in your spirit over here. And he says, you do not have to understand everything to trust me. And that's what I was doing, right? What is your name, sister? Judy. Hi. God bless you. God bless you. That's what I was saying. Because I was all looking, all getting all, all jammed up about, I don't understand. I don't understand. Have you ever said that? Have you ever said that in your life? I don't understand. You're getting going all crazy and all that stuff. And finally, I stopped talking because I was getting so tired. You do not have to understand everything to trust me. One word from God that speaks to your spirit can set you free just like that. Amen. Right? You do not have to understand everything to trust me. And that's what God was getting at in my life. To trust him no matter what I was seeing, no matter what I was feeling, whatever was going on in our lives. So delighting yourself in your Lord puts you in a position to have God's thoughts. And you're delighting in him. Why can you delight in him? Well, I'll just do that, name some things. Nothing will separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is a very present help in time of need, Psalm 46. He'll never leave and he'll never forsake you. He forgives you of one sin, no, all sin. You confess to him, he forgives it. It's wiped clean. He puts it in the sea of his forgetfulness that God is your healer and deliverer regardless of the symptoms you see. God is a healer. Amen. He Amen. wants to heal. He Amen. wants to restore. He is in it. That, let me just say it real clearly. Scripture is very clear. I can't remember the reference, but I'll get it later. Is that Jesus came to this world to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. What were the works of the devil? Well, you see God, Jesus doing all over, raising the dead, setting people free from demonic activity, healing lives, uh, touching people's hearts, and all that's all restoring, taking people out of religiosity. He is restored, that he is our rock and our fortress and a tower of deliverance. As you delight in the Lord, your heart and your mind starts changing. You start magnifying the Lord rather than magnifying the problems. The more that you take time to worship regard, regardless how you feel, say, God, I'm going to worship you because God is still God, even if you're going through hard times in your life. He's still Lord. Even if you're going through changes that you don't have answers for, that you, you start worshiping the Lord, your heart starts to magnify the Lord rather than the problems that you are facing. So you cannot make God bigger. He is already huge, that beyond our understanding. But he can become bigger than you if you cooperate with him. You start magnify, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. That in that there's a magnifying, that the worry, anxiety becomes minimized in the greatness of who God is. The best thing I can tell you that when you're going through a difficult time, just get yourself alone with God and say, God, you are everything I need. That you are so good to me. That you have never left me. That you are the answer for everything I'm facing. And you will find that that problem that seems so looming becomes smaller and smaller and smaller because Jesus becomes bigger to you. You know, can you say amen? amen? Really, I'm telling you, you're facing, you're going through challenges. Yeah, well, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. This is the practical application of doing this. So it's like this, that God is good, that he is faithful, that whatever you are facing, he is more than adequate to take care of it. And he has a plan and purpose that he worked out before the foundation of the world to take care of every issue you are facing. There is nothing that is too hard for God. 
You might say, well, you know, the more that you have the problem exalted, the smaller God becomes to you. The bigger that you look at God, you say, I'm looking at God, even though I'm facing the pressure, my back is against the wall. I'm telling you that he is the one who breaks down the wall. There's no problem that he cannot solve. He's so good in our lives. So I hear that Jesus said these in John 15. If you abide in me, that means continue in relationship and everything. And my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. That God wants to exalt his name before our lives. That the joining up with God, deciding today in this service, before we leave today, whatever has been causing you to not be able to sleep, you're hurting, you're going through the challenge, and that today we're going to change the channel today. The channel is going to be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is above everything, and that he is the one who is our strength, and delighting in him causes us to be able to see him in a much better way, and he is loving, that he's loving and kind. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 1, I love this story. I've read it so many times. It's the story of a man named Elkanah. He had two uh, wives. I can't imagine anyone wanting two wives. That means I would have to have two mother-in-laws. <laughs> Ooh, no. All respect to all of our mother-in-laws here. But hey, hey, do I really want two sets of eyes looking at me all the time? Like, what are you doing to my daughter? <laughs> like this. Hey, listen, I don't, I don't know, but that was, a, that's what was happening. So there was two wives. There was Penina and Hannah. Penina was had a lot of children and getting just everything. Hannah was barren for this period of time. And so Penina, she was, she was in like this cat fight kind of thing. She was in cat fight mode, kept on gnawing at Hannah. You didn't have children. Look at that. You, I've given my husband all you. You haven't given your husband anything. Because in that, the Jewish people, they felt that if you were barren, you were cursed of God, of course. So what happened is she's just, she said, she's going through this year after year after year after year after year, going through this all this stuff and going through the lack of it. And, you know, any woman that most most women, they just want to have children. My wife did, too. We had periods of time we could not have one. Then we did. And the Lord just opened her womb. It was great. And so what happened is that there that so God. So he comes along and she's there in the temple. And Eli, the priest, was there and by right there. And she starts pouring her heart out to God. Pouring her heart out. She starts there. She was, she had, she had the panina was getting on her nerves. And her, can I say it? You, you love saying this. Getting on her last nerve. Is that right? I hear that so much down here. You're on my last nerve, right? Like, okay, I don't think that's a good thing. You know, maybe that's not good. When I first heard it, I thought, how many nerves do you have? Okay. <laughs> you only have one nerve? What's going on? Anyway, then I started understanding what it meant. And so uh, yeah, Hannah was just like, she was totally, this is like getting to me 1,000%. So she's pouring her heart out to God. Eli thinks that she's getting drunk. So he's looking and said, why? Put that wine away from you. Put her that strong drink. And she says, no, no, my Lord, no. I'm a woman that is that is vexed in spirit. She was really getting to her like that. And that she was uh, calling out for the Lord to have a son. If you uh, have ever gone through that, you know that that's a hard thing. Because your desire is to be maternal. You want to have a child. And that's a very normal thing. So there, she's just pouring her heart out to God. She was under all this harassment from her, the second woman in the, in the relationship there until finally that Eli says, be at peace, go. God will answer your request. And she had peace in her heart. I'm telling you, when you pour your heart out to God, all right, rather than on the other people. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Well, you know, you give too many pieces of your mind, you don't have a lot of mind left. Rather than, no, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Cool the jets. Cool down the jets. All right? Start to go and say, I'm going to pour my heart out to God. Because God, I can trust God. And you know, when you trust God like that, say, I'm going to trust God. This is hard. It's not negating that you're not going through a hard thing. 
That's very true. But you know what? God can handle it all. Yes, he can. Amen. When you learn how to pour your heart out to God, you'll be like Hannah there. She pouring her heart out. I don't have a child. And she keeps on going. The other, the second woman keeps on going at me. Uh, all this other stuff. But you know what? She finally laid it down and said, I'm going to trust God. Um, what do you need to pour your heart out to? About to God. Who do you... What do you need to start pouring your heart out to God? We all have those things, don't we? Sometimes at different pressures. But you know what? Hannah was a woman that says, I'm going to pour my heart out to God. And in the same time, in a very short time, she became pregnant and they had a baby. And who was the baby? Samuel, one of the greatest prophets of the Lord. And led the people of God. That God had a replacement that was going on. Uh, Eli would no longer be the prophet nor the priest that was there. And he had a great blessing. And finally she just said, I, I give this child to the Lord. I give this child to the Lord. And you know the story. She, After he was weaned, he was sent there to live with Eli, to work in the temple and things like that. It was a great thing for him. See, God had more than what she thought. But she had to come to a place where she poured her heart out to God. It doesn't do a lot to pour your heart out at other people. Oh, you did this. You shouldn't have done that. You know, you look like an angry wolf. <laughs> I guess, you know, it's better to say, I'm going to pour my heart to God because God can take it. More importantly, he can help you see his viewpoint on things. Hannah didn't have any idea that my son, that I have lent to the Lord, is now then going to be used of God to be one of the greatest prophets of Israel. And after that, by the way, she had a whole bunch of other children who came in. You can read about in 1 Samuel 2. Changing the channel. Changing the channel. Say that with me again. Changing the channel. Go on, you're so good. Goodness. I wish I had a class when I taught eighth grade that you were all in my eighth grade class. It was good. It was good. Channel also, let's look at the last one, which was very... Uh, no, the th uh, next to the last. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, your vindication like the new day. That's verses 5 and 6. Commit means to roll in the original Hebrew language. It means to roll. It means to totally give everything up to God. It's easy to, for me to say, I'm going to use myself as an example. It's easy for me to say, I'm trusting God. I'm committing my way to God. But in practicality, on a daily basis, am I really committing it to God? Am I trusting him no matter what? And I've mentioned a couple different examples of many others in my own life where I say, well, I'm not really as committing this to God as much as I thought. Where I had to come to a place, similar to Hannah, said, I'm giving up God. I'm surrendering. You know what lifting your hands up to the Lord is? Is that I'm surrendering. I'm surrendering to you. It's more than just lifting your hands up and in your heart say, God, whatever happens, I want to be joined up with you. The next part of it is the last one, which I really love. Be still, verse 7, before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Being still before God, I believe, is the foundation of having the peace of God in our lives. Being still. So what is being still? Well, yeah, it's a time where we say we're spending time alone with God. We work it out in our schedules. We don't let other things get in. <clears throat> when I get up in the morning myself, I spend time alone with the Lord. I have a, a journal that I've been using for the last seven years. It's great. I should have been doing it before that. I didn't, but I said I'm not going to pour over what I should have been doing. I look and say, okay, be still before the Lord. I'm spending time and I'm writing down scriptures and I'm reading scriptures that are going there that helps me at the beginning of my day to hear the voice of God what it to tune me to what he is I know that many of you do this already I know that but in order to go I don't go out of the house without doing it that would have to be like a, a fire on the whole block and we're all emblazed and in fire all over the place I guess that would get me out of my house before that but I've learned over the years and you have learned it also I need to be alone with God every day to spend. That's just him and I.
talking and listening as to what he wants. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. What does it mean? Just simply spending time writing down what scriptures that God is speaking, reading the word of God, letting it not just be words, but also it sinks deep into your spirit. So that in your life, that when you come up for the absent, the tribulations that you will, you will face, that you will see, wow, there's a different way of looking at this. There's a different way for me to see it. And rather than being engulfed by a tsunami of emotion and hurt and pain and all this stuff and anger, like, you know, people coming at you and all this stuff, you start to say, God, you are still in control. And when you are be still and know that in God, you recognize he's really above everything. So how do we deal with this anxiety? We're just going over trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in him. Second, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you his heart about things. Or thirdly, commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord, not just in word. Say, God, my life is in your hands. I'm not living my life for myself. I'm living for Jesus. And fourthly, be still and know that I'm God. It says there, when we hope in the Lord, that we'll inherit the land. What's the land? Well, the promised land to the people of Israel was God's promised land to Abraham, <coughs> Isaac, and Jacob. And the land is it could be the salvation of your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren. could be that neighbor next door that you may not know about it, but maybe they're facing a cancer. All right? And they don't know about it even. You know, but God wants to use you to touch their lives. That's the land, right? More land. You know, land is was considered very, very important to the Israelites. But there's a land that is going where God wants souls. He wants souls. <laughs> and when we learn to cooperate, it's a learning process. And it's changing, evolved, and everything. And we come in and we're joining up with God. We got to see that God sees us. And he flows through our lives to touch other people. Amen. But this changing of the channel is really important. Changing our channel to be on God's channel rather than doing things that we feel naturally should be done and we think it should be done and we feel it should be done. You know what? When you spend time alone with God, you say, okay, this is how I feel. This is not how I sh should be feeling, but I am. But God, I'm changing the channel. I'm going to choose to trust you i'm going to choose to commit my way to you i'm going to have delight in you and you will give me the desires of my heart that lord you have a plan and purpose which are like, how many would agree that going god's way is always the best yes. would you agree with that Amen. so today what we're going to do if you don't mind uh, we just i don't think i went too long but hope i didn't if I am, forgive me, just start yawning and I'll understand. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. I understand that, okay, I understand. He's a Pentecostal. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to pray right now. But I'd like you that, I want you to be honest with yourselves. You don't have to be honest with me. I'm here today, gone tomorrow. You know, Pastor Art will be back. And he's, he's so good. He's so, such an excellent guy. It's today, I want to ask you, where do you need to change the channel in your life? Has been has depression been getting a hold of you? Been finding you're hurt. There are people that you have relationships and they're kind of like they're not the way you would like them to be. All that kind of stuff. You know what? You can be honest with God yes. in everything. And God sees it already. Amen. So you're not hiding anything Amen. from Him. Well, I'm ashamed. Then you can go to God because. He died on the cross for all of our sin. What's yes, well, the Bible I read? You know, when I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God does not hold things against us. Yes, right? Amen. He doesn't hold things that get hold of us. Say, wow, you remember what you did last week? And that's like you did two years ago. And all that. God's not like that. When we ask him to forgive you, he cleanses us. He forgives us in our lives. 
So I want to ask you, where do you need to change the channel today? Where do you need to change? Let's stand together right now, if you don't mind. If you're able, I'm going to ask you please to come forward if it's okay. I feel pretty lonely up here. But it's not just for me, it's for us. You know, we're part of the body of Christ. If you don't mind, if you're able to come up, it's okay. Very good. I'm feeling less lonely now. Good. 